show if you want to click that next slide. <clears throat> Sorry, there That's we okay. go. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, again, just a, just a reminder with the antitrust and uh, everything we say here needs to stay within the within this group and uh, do not discuss things outside of the meeting. So there are some things that are uh, that are uh, confidential and uh, antitrust. So again, I appreciate everybody's uh, uh, attention. This detail. Uh, like to move into our uh, safety topic, and I'd like to introduce Tad Powell, that chairs our safety committee, to give that uh, message this morning. Thank you, Jake. Um, last month, as some of you may know, was National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. It's a time to focus efforts on identifying the signs of mental health and directing treatment to those who need it. With the COVID-19 lockdown, we've seen so many uh, changes as far as job loss, uh, businesses affected, children taken out of schools. You know, we're disrupting our normal routines. We've increased social isolation. And on top of that, we've lost many outlets that we usually have to eliminate uh, these stressors. Um, and then of course, you have the stress of potentially contracting a life-threatening disease uh, on top of that. So by combining all those, it can turn into a perfect storm, which increases the risk of suicide. Um, knowing this, we should be concerned about our employees. Um, construction workers uh, already have the cards stacked against us. Um, even without COVID-19, construction workers uh, have the second highest rate of suicide and they also use prescription opioids more than all other professions combined. So with combining that stress that likelihood, you just increase more risk. Um, there's 75% increased likelihood of making a suicide plan. They're twice as likely to attempt suicide. So this is all bad news, all concerning news. So what should we do about it? The main thing we wanna do is open up a conversation. We need to get together as managers, supervisors, crew members, and get educated on what to look for. Uh, create a supportive environment for employees uh, to have someone to go to, be willing to have those open conversations. Um, simple things, add this as a toolbox topic. Um, the difference it makes in actually talking about this helps to increase the employee's awareness of it and your openness to actually help. Uh, so by creating that caring culture and having the bold leadership to move forward on programs uh, geared towards suicide prevention, that's the key here. That's how we're gonna move forward on this. Um, you can find out more information about this by going to our website under nasco.org slash news. Thank you, Ted. Uh, I'd like to introduce Max Gowdy to uh, give our financial update. Max? Thanks, Jake. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for attending. Um, so if you could just flip to the first slide there, Sheila. So just as a, a quick snapshot, everyone, on, on our revenues, comparing our, our actuals this year to our budgeted revenues, and then comparing them to 2018-2019 uh, actuals. So for the year, this fiscal year, we're down about $274,000 uh, in revenue. And as compared to our 2018-2019 uh, previous year actuals, we're down about $343,000. We could go to the cost slide. If you could flip to the next slide there, Sheila. Oh. We're on expenses, Max. Oh, sorry, I didn't even see that. Um, so then in regards to our expenses, comparing the same comparison applies. Um, actuals to budgets this year, our costs are down uh, 88,000 uh, in total. And then as compared to our 2018-2019 actuals, we're down 314,000 uh, in costs overall. That comes out to our net net ordinary income line, where as compared to our budget, uh, you can see for the year, uh, we had a loss of $26,000 uh, compared to a budgeted uh, gain of 160. 
And as you can see in 2018, 2019, we had a $2,000 $2, uh, income. So we'll talk about a couple of the factors that affected these. Uh, on the revenue side, from a positive standpoint, uh, we had one uh, exchange event in Dearborn, Michigan that had a positive impact on our revenues for the year. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19 restrictions, we weren't able to have any more of these obviously in the year, but when these restrictions are, are lifted, uh, we do plan on uh, planning more of these throughout the country to, to take the NASCO um, events to, to different areas. On the PACP revenue side, uh, we were down about 10% in revenue this year as compared to our budget. And then when you compare that to the 2018, 2019 actuals, we're down about 20%. Um, thankfully, uh, we were able to successfully transition within about 10 days from in-person PACP events and trainings to virtual trainings, or this uh, decline in revenue could have been much more severe. Um, the team at NASCO2 continues to uh, enhance the virtual training platforms and the experience for the attendees in order to, to make these, uh, these better going forward. From an expense standpoint, a couple of the things that, that have uh, uh, taken place this year. So NASCO has uh, transitioned all our printing and shipping of our training manuals to Gilmore and Associates, I believe they're called. Um, this has done a, done a positive thing for us in the effect that it's, it's really shifted the accounts receivable liability from NASCO onto Gilmore and increasing our efficiencies. From an annual conference standpoint, we did, uh, although it was uh, canceled for this year, uh, the 2020 year, um, unfortunately, uh, we still did have some costs associated with those cancellations that we couldn't get out of. Um, those weren't necessarily offset by revenues, but we do really want to thank and, uh, the members that still provided uh, sponsorship support and did not pull that support that really helped offset that. Um, as well, um, from a positive standpoint, these conferences traditionally are not covered by, by revenues as a total. So there is a bit of a loss generally on them. So not having that this year also helped with the, the economics of NASCO. And the last but not least one was the, the IAPMO plumbing code uh, uh, situation. So from a legal perspective, we were over our 2019-2020 budget by $105,000. About $78,000 of this was uh, for legal fees associated with this plumbing code. Uh, the positive thing is we were successfully um, able to overcome this, uh, supported by the legal team and fought by members within our group and the, the board of directors um, did approve these funds and these fees so that we could support the, the industry membership um, for the year. So that was, a, that was a positive from that standpoint. So we do have one voting um, uh, option we have to go through. We need to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. So these were sent out uh, May 8th of 2020 of this year, and as well, October 14th, were sent out to all, the whole membership. Um, so Sheila will be launching a poll where you can uh, electronically uh, vote on these. We do ask that if at all possible, if you've made the arrangements ahead of time, that one vote per member company, in the event there's more than one vote, uh, we will be looking at them after the fact and making sure that there is only one vote per company. So if you could all please vote now and then uh, we'll get you the results. Let me, uh, I'll motion the, uh, oh, the uh, approval of the meeting. No, that's fine. I'll, I'll motion the approval of the, the meeting minutes. Can I get a second? Second. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for reminding me, Jake. Okay, that's fine. I think all in favor, just vote. So I assume we still have votes still coming in, Sheila? I think it's pretty much concluded. So I think we can add polling. Okay.
And with that, the approval of the minutes passes. So with that, everyone, I'd like to introduce, uh, for those of you who don't know her, Sheila Joy, our executive director. Sheila is going to kind of give an overview of some of the accomplishments and some different things throughout the year that have gone on and update on some of the general items within NASCO. Thank you, Max. Uh, first again, or first of all, I want to reiterate what Max said earlier about our sponsors. Um, if we had not had such loyal sponsors continuing to um, give their resources to allow us to do some of these things, uh, we, would, we would not be in the financial state that we are right now. So we want to thank Avanti, BLD, Doge, ProPipe, and Bacter for continuing their sponsorship of the annual meeting, even though it did not occur. And we want to welcome Kaiser Premier, a new sponsor for events, um, who just joined this week as a result of um, our plea for some sponsorship opportunities. We had to get creative this year uh, since events are not happening and hopefully all of you have seen an, a communication that came through from Dawn, but we are now offering sponsorships of some technical videos that we're producing, one for grouting, one for CIPP. We have some webinars scheduled in the coming months and year um, remaining useful life, uh, will, which will be conducted by our Technical Advisory Council. So there are a lot of really good, new, unique types of opportunities. And if you did not get that um, information from Dawn, you can simply email her at dawn at nasco.org to see what kind of opportunities might be most appropriate for you. Um, before I continue on, um, without really getting into the detail of all the players and participants, I really wanna thank our staff um, they are the hardest working group of people I've ever met in my life. And with the um, advent of COVID-19 and our ongoing pandemic, um, seeing them work so hard from home and continue to produce and to continue to go above and beyond has just been remarkable. Also our board of directors. And if you go to nasco.org, you can see them all listed and I encourage you to do that to get to know who they are. Um, but our board of directors is just phenomenal. They are extremely supportive, on call all the time for any question or information that I need. Um, we have been extremely blessed this year to have them and to have them continue on um, supporting us. Uh, so we really appreciate our board, we appreciate our staff. And um, again, go to nasco.org about and you can see who these folks are, but just wanted to let you all know how much they serve our, com our, our organization, how grateful I personally am for them. So our theme this year, as you all know, is strong and steady in 2020. We're not giving up, we're not slowing down. And in fact, we're actually moving and working um, pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> so I just wanted to take a few minutes to show a few of the highlights, um, things that have been happening. When Joe gets into the committee update, he's going to get into the detail of, or the, he's going to share a video that will really get into the detail of the incredible amount of work that our committees do. So I don't want to be redundant. And in doing so, I just pulled a few of the highlights aside from the committee work that I wanted you all as members to be aware of. Um, so speaking of strong and steady, um, we're just extremely pleased that Year to date for 2020, we have already slightly, but we have already exceeded our membership uh, for 2019 for the entire calendar year. So that is something that we're, we're really excited about because we weren't sure what was gonna happen with COVID, whether we would be getting um, a decline in membership because of the fees and that sort of thing. So thank you to all of you members for staying true and staying strong and steady and helping us get where we need to be. Without that, and without the member participation in our incredible committees, we could not be accomplishing everything that we're doing for NASCO, but also everything we're doing for our industry. It's really making a huge effect, as you will see, as, as you hear later from Steve Dyer, government relations specialist, um, from Chris Garrett, our technical advisory council chair, and others. You'll, you'll really get firsthand information on how your membership and your membership dollars and your involvement is making an incredible difference. Uh, just quickly, this is how our membership really breaks out by type of membership. Um, and we really love the fact that this mirrors our industry as a whole. So as you can see, 
Um, the 33, the gray part, is the contractor group, and we were originally formed as a contractor organization, so that makes sense. But we have a very healthy um, blend of consulting engineers, of public agencies, um, from suppliers and manufacturers. So we're extremely well represented and we continue to maintain that balance and to continue to strive for that. Um, I'm sorry, I skipped a slide. So that's by company and this one is by individuals. So within those member companies, for example, we have 373 people who fall into the contractor category. But you can see that those um, still the, the pieces of the pie remain pretty solid. Um, in terms of training, we've been extremely busy. Heather Myers has moved up to program manager for about the past year now, and she's doing an exceptional job. Um, we began training, our trainers began training the PACP revision 7.0.4 on October 1st, and we're getting rave reviews in terms of many of the little nuances that were either corrected, adjusted, made you know, more streamlined so that we can better teach our, our um, students. And we are also ahead of schedule to launch PACP version 8.0 in 2023. So we're moving it through the process. We have a very solid timeline with the help of our infrastructure assessment committee, um, with the help of our software committee. We are really uh, making some incredible strides there. So we're excited about that. Um, ITCP has, for lack of a better, I mean, this probably isn't the best way to describe it, but it's been a little bit of a stepchild up until now. Every, all the focus has been on PACP. ITCP is an incredibly important uh, training program that NASCO has developed, and it's been around for a long time, obviously. Uh, Jerry Munchmeyer was very much involved in that from the beginning, He's still a trainer. Um, but we've seen a, a real spike in trainer applications. We've seen a major spike in course requests. Um, and we're also this year developing a third technology course um, for grouting. So we look forward to seeing the inspector portion of our training really uh, grow over the coming months. And just finally, in terms of training, um, we have, you know, when COVID hit, we had to quickly develop the virtual training. It was a little bit scary, but what has happened is incredible opportunities to come out of that. One of them is, you know, we have a lot of seasoned trainers who've been around for a long time, some of whom were probably pretty close to retirement. And I've heard from them that, you know what, now that I don't have to travel all over the world, I would love to keep training. So we, the quality of our trainers has really been maintained and, and we're, we've been able to retain some of those folks, which is great. Um, we've gotten, a request from all over the globe for international opportunities. And it is something that our board is considering right now in partnership with WRC um, to really look at where those opportunities lie. We have made great strides in South America with um, ICTUS and we are going to continue our relationship with them um, probably stronger and better than ever before. We continue to work in Canada. So we look forward to those opportunities that come up as a result of what may have been considered a negative and turned into a real positive. And of course, we're expanding reach. People can take the courses anytime, anywhere. So um, training is, is really growing and really doing well. And we're very grateful that we were not hit harder than we were with the COVID situation and the in-class training. So I'm gonna take a little pause now. Um, I have a short video to show you. This is um, Mike Kerr, our training director, introducing our 2020 Trainer of the Year. So I hope you enjoy this. Hi, I'm Michael Kerr, NASCO's Training Director, and it's my pleasure to be here this year to present the 2020 Trainer of the Year Award. Uh, we're fortunate at NASCO that we have a lot of good, qualified, professional trainers to be able to train the information that we've developed. And uh, glad to be able to present a Trainer of the Year award each year to one of them that is outstanding job that they've done. When someone completes a course, we ask them a lot of information to better help us maybe improve the course itself or to better understand the trainers. And some of the questions we ask very specific to the trainers is, were they knowledgeable? Were they professional? Did they keep things interesting? Were they patient? Not everyone has the same amount of knowledge level coming into the courses, so it takes a little patience sometimes. 
Did they present the concept in an easy to follow manner? Would you recommend this trainer to other students? And those kind of questions help us better understand the uh, program and the trainers. Some of the answers that we got back for this year's Trainer of the Year Award is the instructor was great and very knowledgeable. The trainer was an excellent trainer. Uh, the trainer did an excellent job. I was glad I had the opportunity to sit with this trainer. He's very knowledgeable and an excellent teacher. And lastly, trainer definitely knew the material in the manual, very clearly explained when he spoke, and I didn't even fall asleep. Okay, that is an important one too. He says that, he goes on to say, he was very pleasant trainer. And that's very important to us, to be able to get the information out to everyone. The trainer of the year that we're talking about is someone who has been a trainer since 2012. And in 2019 alone, trained 43 different classes. In the amount of time since they've been a trainer, they've trained 143 different classes. And they've helped me out personally as a training director. If I have any questions, can you do this for me? Can you sit down on this class? Can you work with others? And they've done an excellent job, not just as a trainer, but throughout the NASCO community. So this year, I'd like to present the 2020 Trainer of the Year Award to, to Mr. Paul Booth. Thank you, Mr. Paul Booth, for everything that you've done. Thank you. Hello, my name is Paul Booth. I'm the NASCO Master Trainer for the Southeast region of the United States. It's with great pleasure that I accept this NASCO 2020 Trainer of the Year Award. I'd like to thank Sheila and Mike and those involved with this award uh, for even considering me. Uh, we have as an association, many fantastic, knowledgeable and experienced trainers uh, bringing our PACP program to the masses. We also have an excellent support staff at NASCO, Kathy and Lisa, who work with the trainers and make sure that everything is scheduled properly and everything is uh, dotted and crossed properly. And that's no easy task, I know that. Uh, but just like our remarks section of the PACP inspection form tells us, I have to keep this short and sweet. So as we say in the sewer, time and tide wait for no man ed norton thank you very much and enjoy the meeting wow. congratulations to paul he is a strong and solid leader in our training program and we are just extremely grateful for him and all of our trainers they're all excellent so thank you um, just to kind of wrap up my ongoing little presentation here, the other thing I wanted to share that's kind of outside of some of the committee activity are our scholarships. This year we were very honored and grateful that we could award five separate um, Ralston scholarships to students um, from UTA, University of Texas at Arlington, and Trenchless Technology Center at Louisiana Tech. So congratulations to these folks. We also awarded many uh, Jack Doheny Memorial uh, Scholarships. This gentleman um, is from, let's see, Springfield, Illinois. And you can see his little uh, words of gratitude and it just really helped us um, feel encouraged. He encouraged us by knowing that awarding these scholarships really make a difference in the lives of these professionals. So congratulations to Tyler and all the many, many others who have awarded Jack Doheny, have been awarded Jack Doheny scholarships this year. Um, finally, I just wanted to share that we have developed a new website in WordPress, which is gonna be much easier than our current one. We have also just in the past couple of weeks uh, signed a contract with Salesforce for a new customer relation management system. And we have identified after many, many months of investigation, a learning management system all of this bundling together to help us better manage our members, our trainers, our students, our programs, our committees. And so we're excited about this and uh, you should be looking for all of this to be launched in 2021. 
So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joe Schottifer, he's our Vice President, to give you an update on our committees. Thanks, Sheila. So um, I'm here to highlight uh, the, uh, the, uh, the committee activities, and there's been a lot of them. And uh, I would like to first off thank everybody for their commitment and their time uh, to uh, NASCO and to the industry. And Speaking of time, um, how many conversations have you had as of late that if you had uh, more staff or another crew, how much you could get accomplished? And um, I'm gonna highlight today our, our NASCO's newest committee, which is workforce development. And uh, this, is our, this, is, this is what we're putting forth uh, as an answer to, to help combat this, uh, the problem that we're seeing everywhere. And um, it, basically, you know, in, the, in, a, in, a, in a simplistic form, uh, the committee is, is, is charged with uh, giving people a purpose, giving them a reason to learn. And through our partnership with Skills USA, um, we're able to get into the vocational schools and, and, and get into the curriculum um, skills that we need for, for our industry. Um, not only that, but also for people that are looking to, uh, to uh, a change in career. Um, we know it's a, uh, it's, it, it is, uh, at, at the, uh, it's a much needed career. Um, it's, we're, we're often the unsung heroes, um, but it is certainly something that we want to get the word out. And um, so um, this is a, a first off very, very positive. Um, and also talking about time, um, that uh, as you're sitting here and look and you're going to watch the committees and say, well, I don't have the time. Um, you know, none of us do, but every single one of us has the time or has the ability to make time. And that's what we do. And what you're going to see um, over the course of the next 15 minutes is all the hard work of people who made time um, to better the industry. Um, testament to that is our technical advisory committee who has spent time um, uh, engaging with all the committees and, and, and are available on all of our committee calls. Um, so um, what you're about to see um, over the course of the next uh, 15 minutes um, is the, not only is the, is the committee activity for the last year, um, current uh, chairs and uh, current goals can be found at nasco.org. Um, and, and again, keep in mind as we're, as we're watching all these accomplishments, volunteerism, and also that um, we were, uh, um, that, that all these individuals made the time to be here. Um, and we certainly ap appreciate all the work that they've done for the industry. NASCO's mission is to set standards for the assessment, maintenance, and rehabilitation of underground infrastructure, and to assure the continued acceptance and growth of trenchless technologies. We accomplish this by serving as the industry source for education, technical resources, and advocacy, all made possible by NASCO's dynamic committees. Adhering to NASCO's core values of knowledge, fairness, adaptability, camaraderie, efficiency, and support, NASCO committees made a major impact on our industry in 2019. As a 501c6 trade association, one of NASCO's greatest responsibilities is to serve as the industry voice for funding of underground infrastructure. In doing so, NASCO's Government Relations Committee has gained significant traction over the past two years. In December of 2019, a contingency of eight NASCO representatives from across the country gathered in Washington, D.C. to meet with local representatives and share the need to fund the repair of water and wastewater systems. NASCO has identified three key recommendations. Recommendation number one, increase funding for collections and conveyance infrastructure. Specifically, NASCO encourages expanded funding through federal programs to increase funding to assess, rehabilitate, and repair or replace wastewater and stormwater collections and conveyance systems. Additionally, the Government Accountability Office should complete a report to Congress analyzing the state of collections and conveyance infrastructure and the national need for its maintenance and repair. Recommendation number two, strengthen asset management requirements and funding. A good way to accomplish this is by requiring system-wide asset management plans for all applications for federally subsidized grants and loans. It should also be required that certified inspectors perform inspections of collection and conveyance systems, 
and that a standardized identification and assessment method be used to assess pipe conditions. Finally, technical and grant assistance should be provided to hardship communities that lack the financial and technical resources to develop comprehensive asset management plans. Recommendation number three, maintain regulatory compliance enforcement. NASCO recommends the full funding annually to federal programs and offices that directly and indirectly ensure that the Clean Water Act and National Pollution Discharge Elimination System, NPDES, permits remain in full regulatory compliance. We realize it may be difficult to travel to Washington, D.C., so NASCO has made contacting government leaders quick and easy for everyone. NASCO's Sewer System Heroes program at nasco.org provides a tool that identifies your leaders and automatically sends pre-written, time-sensitive emails on important issues, including support of the coronavirus relief package. You can also access the tool by texting the word PIPE to 25994. NASCO's Infiltration Control Grouting Committee was busy behind the scenes working to build awareness of grouting and provide resources to make sure the work is done right. Development continued on curriculum for a new inspector training certification program focusing on grouting. While the committee also worked on the development of a white paper based on grout test cell research and continued its efforts on a new specification guideline for capital grouting, which will be published in 2020. Since safety is the cornerstone of everything we do, NASCO's Health and Safety Committee is always standing by to help other technical committees address matters pertaining to the protection of workers and our communities. This year, the committee was busy addressing CIPP safety emission research results from Louisiana Tech University's Trenchless Technology Center. Delivered late in 2019, the research findings prompted the Health and Safety Committee to update NASCO's CIPP safety guideline to address TTC recommendations as a goal for 2020. But more on that later. NASCO's Health and Safety Committee also created a safety manual template covering policies, confined space entry, hazard identification, and more. Closely tied to NASCO's PACP training, the Infrastructure Condition Assessment Committee is one of NASCO's busiest committees. With a primary focus on ensuring PACP is up to date and accessible to the largest number of people possible, the IA Committee provided input and updates for Revision 7.0.4, which will be released in late 2020. With the growing need to assess pressure pipe conditions, the IA Committee also developed a coding system specific to addressing this demand, which is slated for inclusion in PACP version 8. Additionally, the Committee worked to provide a more universal format to PACP by creating both metric and imperial editions in the 7.0.4 revision. Finally, the IA Committee did its part to represent infrastructure assessment through its presentation at the WET Show in 2020. With awareness of NASCO's training programs growing around the globe, the impact and influence made by the International Relations Committee is also expanding. NASCO partner CISTT, Colombia's Institute of the International Society for Trenchless Technology, was instrumental in Bogota adopting PACP as their standard. Another important NASCO partner is CIRIU, the Center for Expertise and Research on Infrastructure in Urban Areas in Canada. Through this partnership, PACP is available to French-Canadian-speaking professionals in the province of Quebec. The committee is also busy translating PACP version 7 into Spanish, along with the Manual of Practice for Trenchless Technologies and Asset Management. In addition to longer-term projects, including the development of the Sewer Lateral Rehabilitation and Replacement Manual, in partnership with ASCE and UESI, the Lateral Committee advocated for the protection of trenchless technologies specific to lateral applications. Through the hard work of this committee's Plumbing Code Workgroup, 
Ayat Mo granted NASCO's petitions to amend Uniform Plumbing Code 715.3. A little background. During the development phase of the 2018 UPC, IATMO's technical committee approved a proposal that banned the use of cured-in-place pipe in building sewers made of cast iron pipe. Prior to the change, wording of Section 715.3 allowed the use of CIPP. NASCO's lateral committee worked to propose objections at each phase of the 2021 UPC development process, which also excluded CIPP. However, all attempts were rejected by IATMO's technical committee. After months of rejections, NASCO decided to appeal the IATMO Board of Directors. We were successful. IATMO has amended Section 715.3 of both the 2018 and 2021 UPC to accept trenchless methodology and materials in accordance with ASTM specifications. NASCO's persistence and advocacy resulted in a successful resolution that protects CIPP and other trenchless technologies for our entire industry. As if that wasn't enough, the Lateral Committee also created a separate work group to address required residential inspections of laterals in the transaction of real estate and presented at industry conferences throughout the year. Ensuring manhole rehabilitation education is represented well across the industry NASCO's Manhole Rehabilitation Committee developed the most highly rated NASCO presentation at the 2020 Underground Construction Technology Conference in Fort Worth, Texas. The Manhole Rehabilitation Committee also finalized the NASCO and ASCE Manual of Practice on Manhole Rehabilitation, which is in final review. Since the topic of O&M covers such a wide area, NASCO's Operations and Maintenance Committee is made up of smaller work groups. The Bypass Pumping Workgroup completed a specification guideline on bypass pumping, which is in final review. While the O&M Committee's Jetter Code of Practice Workgroup continued its focus on expanding the Jetter Manual to include cleaning and extraction technologies. 2019 saw the conclusion of a major two-plus year research project with oversight from NASCO's Pipe Rehabilitation Committee. In response to reports questioning the safety of emissions from the CIPP process, NASCO funded research conducted by the Trenchless Technology Center at Louisiana Tech University. Partnering with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the final report was delivered in January of 2020. TTC hosted an industry-wide webinar in December of 2019, detailing its findings and formal recommendations. As a brief overview, testing included styrene and other volatile organic compounds, different geographic locations covering nine total sites, pipe lengths and diameters ranging from 6 to 36 inches, measurements captured before, during, and after curing at termination manhole, and measurements at various locations in the surrounding outside area and inside nearby buildings. Worker exposure was also measured via personal exposure monitors. In summary, TTC's recommendations focus on two main areas, liner transport trucks and emission stacks. TTC recommends that active air monitoring be utilized at initial opening of the liner transport truck door to ensure a safe work environment by those entering the truck. Further, at the initial opening of the liner transport truck door, PPE should be worn by those entering the truck. TTC also recommends a perimeter of 15 feet be implemented around exhaust manholes and emission stacks during curing. This perimeter could be entered for short amounts of time not exceeding five minutes. If this area must be entered for longer than five minutes, PPE should be used. Additionally, TTC suggests that emission stacks should be a minimum of six feet in height to enhance the dispersion of emissions and lessen the likelihood of workers entering the perimeter from having to cross into the plume, even when wearing PPE. In close partnership with NASCO's Health and Safety Committee, the Pipe Rehab Committee's CIPP Safety Workgroup will continue to keep a pulse on additional ways to keep our workers and communities safe. 
TTC's full report and webinar may be found at nasco.org. NASCO's Pressure Pipe Committee's objective is to establish standards to assess and rehabilitate force mains and water lines. Through this committee's work in developing technical articles and presenting at industry conferences, including UCT, the committee has made significant strides in sharing information about the evolution of rehab technology for water mains and other pressure pipes, the operations and maintenance of pressure pipe linings, and various case studies to help the industry learn from practical experience. The Rehab Zone Committee, which partners with Underground Construction Technology to present a hands-on display of trenchless technologies each year at UCT, found new ways to improve the 2020 exhibit with an improved floor plan, new technologies such as UV Cure, and a special education day for students. NASCO's Software Committee works with all software vendors to establish and implement uniform programs that incorporate PACP, MACP, and LACP. The Software Committee made great progress in 2019 by identifying certification levels, developing brand standards for vendors, setting requirements for the import and export of data, and discussing new ways to recognize AI products entering the market. Recognizing the need to support our industry in filling the skilled trade gap, NASCO has formed a new committee for 2020, Workforce Development. We are grateful to two of our past presidents for leading this important committee. As a national partner of Skills USA, NASCO will utilize its Workforce Development Committee to build closer relationships with state directors of Skills USA and build awareness overall to attract qualified workers to our industry. In addition to all of these accomplishments, NASCO committee members also contributed their time and knowledge to the development of technical articles published throughout the year. We are grateful to the ongoing support of the leading industry trade publications. Through their partnership, NASCO continues to set standards for the assessment, maintenance, and rehabilitation of underground infrastructure and assures the continued acceptance and growth of trenchless technologies. As we enter a new fiscal year, with the exception of a few leaders who rolled off due to work or personal commitments, we are grateful to the majority of NASCO committee chairs and co-chairs who have agreed to extend their terms for one year. In consideration of uncertainties surrounding COVID-19, maintaining this strong leadership into the coming year will allow NASCO to remain strong and steady in 2020. We also give thanks to members of NASCO's impressive Technical Advisory Council for the leadership and guidance they provide to our technical committees throughout the year. Combined, NASCO's TAC members share 200 years of experience in the assessment, maintenance, and rehabilitation of underground infrastructure, 30 plus years of experience in PACP and ITCP training, and a deep understanding of all trenchless technologies. To learn more or to join a NASCO committee, please visit nasco.org today. So to build upon, um, before we get to Chris, um, just to build upon what Joe said, it's, I think it's extremely um, impress impressive to see all the work that's been done. And just wanna thank all the committee chairs and co-chairs past and present. And once again, reiterate that if you're a member and you wanna get involved in some of these things, please go to nasco.org, get involved. And you can see the different list of committees, the chair, co-chair, and then our, again, our current um, goals for this year. So I'm gonna turn it over to Chris now, our, the chair of our Technical Advisory Council, and um, just join me in welcoming him. Thanks, Chris. All right, well, thank you, Sheila, and, and good morning, everyone. Uh, on behalf of the TAC, I wanna thank you for um, you know, being so uh, um, you know, uh, supportive of what we're doing. Uh, as you can see here with the bullet statements, not gonna go over all of them, uh, the type of work that we've been doing, and this is really since uh, April 2020, um, the two most important parts of, of this are the top two, the membership support and the committee support that myself and what I will call the four superstars are providing. Um, if you have a question that we can answer, 
Um, this is one of the uh, benefits of being a uh, NASCO member. We will do our darndest to uh, provide you opinion and technical support. Because we're involved in each one of the committees um, with the five members, we're able to, to um, be fully engrossed uh, with the work that's going on. And as you saw from the video, just about everything that's being done there, we have uh, uh, touch points on. Uh, we're also very excited about what the, um, the future will bring. Uh, this not only involves supporting from the um, spec and standard uh, supports, but also very excited about our work with ANSI, uh, impending work with ISO with um, taking NASCO's uh, PACP experience and exporting it globally. And finally, when we talk about the styrene emissions that was uh, highlighted, um, NASCO has been very generous in the um, support of two previous studies. We are now developing uh, the scope for phase three of the emissions study. Expect that to uh, you know, be part of our 2021 uh, goals. Um, we're thrilled to be part of the team. We look forward to supporting you in the next year. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, and all the technical advisory committee members, they do a lot of work for us and they're very responsive. And we're, we're very grateful for you, Chris, and your leadership. Thank you. Uh, next, I'm gonna turn it over to Steve Dye. Steve have been, has been working with us, I think, I'm gonna say three years. Yeah. Does that sound about right? That's yeah, right. so um, he's really become a part of our team. He's actually attends our staff meetings. He's become very much ingrained in what we do. Um, and he's made a lot of progress for NASCO, but more importantly for our industry. So Steve, if you could just give a quick update, I'd really appreciate it. Sure. <clears throat> thank you, Sheila. And thank you to NASCO and uh, my colleagues on the NASCO staff. It's a great team and the, the, everybody I work with, I'm honored to be a part of your efforts. Um, so a lot going on in the last year on, in DC, as you all are very aware. Um, I, I'm lucky to have uh, the chair, uh, John Sickles, and, and Vice Chair Chase Denny uh, as, as part of our efforts in, in DC, trying to advocate on behalf of the um, of NASCO's interests and in the, in the underground infrastructure sector. Uh, we made really good headway in the in the previous years, and we're on a, in a good place, I think, as the year comes to a, a close. If they move into a uh, a lame duck session of Congress, where they try to put forth uh, at least the FY20 appropriations bill, a reauthorization of the Water um, Resource Development Act for 2020, uh, which will contain a couple of really good things in it that we've all, we've been supportive of over the last couple of years. Um, and you see those bullet points there. Um, and, and it looks like, you know, if they don't do something during this lame duck, they'll probably be teed up to do something in 2021. Uh, a lot of talk around an infrastructure package over the last couple of years. And I think that the coronavirus um, situation has further uh, emphasize the need for some sort of relief in, from Congress uh, to help communities dealing with their aging infrastructure and to uh, repair and maintain it um, adequately to ensure public health and, and protect the environment. Um, you know, I, I think the one I really like to point to here on this on the slide is the increased sewer overflow control grant funds uh, program. Um, that that is the new program that NASCO was the champion of in in Congress over the last uh, couple of years, uh, and now EPA has completed their guidance uh, on it and sent it to states for a review, and uh, and they'll be releasing the funding for FY20 shortly. So new grants will be made available for communities to go out and do CSO, SSO, and stormwater collections uh, O and M projects. Um, and those, not a lot of money in the first year, but they're were teed up for a good number, a good increase in FY20 appropriations when that gets completed. And then in the uh, Word of uh, Act of 2020, uh, they're going to reauthorize that with a sizable increase in the amount of funding. So now that that program's up and running, we, hopefully we'll see a few years going out here where there'll be some real good grant dollars going out to communities to do uh, collection systems O&M. Um, so next slide, please. And couldn't really do it all without the huge support that NASCO members have shown in the last 12 months. Um, you see there from the slide, there's been a huge response from NASCO members in, 
through this sewer system heroes website which is a grassroots platform for and you saw the on the on the video earlier it allows for folks to easily write congress um over a thousand letters sent in the last uh, six months or so on just a coronavirus package alone from nasco members um i will give a shout out to a couple states for really stepping up their game and uh participating in the in the sewer system heroes and sending a lot of letters and maybe other states can if you're from these other states that I didn't mention, you could step up your game a little bit in the year going forward. Michigan, Florida, Georgia, California really did a good job. Particularly, I'll give a shout out to Louisiana for relative to their population size. They they went, uh, uh, they were punched way above their weight and they had a huge number of uh, members from uh, NASCO members from Louisiana sending us. Now Chase might, or uh, Jake might've been strong arming a few folks down there. I don't know, but either way, Louisiana, good job. Um, so moving forward, we're going to do our fly-in virtually in 2020. You saw some pictures before from last year. You can all participate in it. There's the link right there to register. Uh, please do it soon so we can get a lot of folks uh, doing virtual meetings with Congress and during that lame duck session in, in December uh, 2020. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll push into 2021 and, and reassess and go forward with our, our priorities going, uh, going into 2021. But thank you, everybody, and good job. Thank you, Steve. We appreciate you. So I'm going to reintroduce Joe. Uh, Joe, if you could just share a little bit about our 2021 annual conference. Absolutely. Thanks, Sheila. So the uh, update, um, the board met yesterday. Um, we had a tough decision to make. Um, and just as a side note, too, um, the board used to meet quarterly. Um, and now during the uh, the uh, pandemic, the board has now recently started meeting, meeting every six weeks. Um, so we can uh, we can address issues as they come up. Um, and uh, and again, um, as Sheila pointed out, thanks to the board, um, we've uh, we're, we're we're working over three time zones. Um, people attending meetings on vacation um, on the personal time. And and speaking of time, as that as that. Uh, um, as that motif, uh, as we were, we're speaking of, um, there's, there's no shortage of uh, volunteerism and, and, and being selfless with your time. Um, decision made uh, that we had to make was uh, what to do with the 2021 um, conference in Florida. Um, if we're looking at the last seven months um, when we originally made the decision to, to, to have our first annual or last, our 2020 annual virtual, um, we were still planning to do a larger one at this point, um, which now we're doing virtual again. Um, knowing that uh, in the next six months, we don't really have a good handle on whether it will be, we will, we will be safe to travel, okay to travel. Um, we have decided to uh, plan ahead and make this a virtual uh, 2021 conference, uh, virtual in April. And we are looking to do a, uh, an in-person event um, in the fall. And um, so that is uh, what the uh, ways we, as we discussed uh, with the board and, and uh, the decision made yesterday, um, looking at making sure that we're responsible with the membership dollars. Um, if we had waited longer, um, we would have been, we would have, uh, we would have uh, um, gotten into contractual issues with the, uh, with the hotel. So we're currently in negotiations with them about, uh, about, uh, you know, moving this to a later date, but 2021 April is virtual and we're looking for an in-person event and we really hope to see people in person because uh, I think we are all getting tired of this. So thanks, Sheila. Thank you, Joe. So we're gonna turn it over to you all now. Um, we'll take a look at some of the questions that may have come in. And um, I think we only had one from what I can see. Uh, so one of the questions was, what is the organization in South America NASCO is working with? It uh, was in the video, hopefully you saw that. Uh, CISTT, um, specifically ICTUS. And um, we are with, they have been working with us for a few years now to really grow the program down there and just recently they were able to really gain some momentum with Columbia. So we have two um, certified trainers uh, ready to go and of course with virtual we can probably expand as well but that is definitely progressing and we're, we're in the process right now of a new agreement with them and look forward to growing the training program in South America and potentially other areas around the, around the globe. So that was the only question I saw. Um, so I guess we'll just leave it for a second. If anyone else has any more, just please uh, use the time now to maybe ask. Oh, I'm sorry, there are a couple more I didn't see before. Oh, everyone just saying good morning. 
So yeah, good morning. <laughs> That's it. We appreciate all of you. Oh, one more, sorry. Yep. Oh, it said, Britt Babcock, could we recap the trenchless funding that is forecast for 2021? Um, is that an appropriate, or is that a funding question from federal government or is that a? Hey, Steve, what about uh, recapping the executive order that just came sure. out there? That, yeah, that, that, was a, that was a good one. That caught us all by surprise. Uh, two days ago, the president uh, released a, an executive order on um, uh, water resources and water infrastructure priorities for the nation. Uh, and in it, highlighted quite a few of the, the priorities that NASCO has been advocating for and established a, a new federal um, water sub cabinet um, that, that would be a way for cross collaboration between federal agencies to, av to, to advance some of the water infrastructure priorities that, that our nation has right now, um, uh, increased funding included, uh, and, as well as addressing water wor sector workforce needs. Um, so if you, if you haven't seen that, um, it is on the White House website, uh, and it's it's a it's an interesting document. We should see what comes of it after the election, um, but it's a, it was good to see the administration step up like that. Okay, well, thank you. I think they got one other one uh, that was Kay made a comment. I agree, Kay. It was a great video. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Kay. Yeah, Sheila, I think they had another one about uh, PACP and face-to-face -face classes. I can answer that if you'd like. Sure. Um, if the, the question is about what protocols for COVID with face-to-face uh, -face classes, uh, we are doing PACP in-person training, but we are advocating for uh, for COVID protocols. Um, Jerry Weimer has done a good job of that. He carries around his own um, you know, uh, thermometer. Uh, we are encouraging fo folks to have um, um, you know, masks on and uh, appropriate distance, distancing uh, with students um, and really encouraging the local um, you know, sites to uh, have their own health and safety COVID protocols. But uh, we're very bullish on that. And if you have questions about what we recommend, we can certainly answer that for you. And we have a lot of uh, COVID uh, resources available on our website. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I think that's it, folks. So Jake, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sheila. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for joining in. Um, obviously, it is disheartening that we can't meet face to face and we have to do this uh, again and again, but hopefully th times will change here shortly. But um, can I get a motion to uh, adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Can I get a second? I'll second that, Jake. And all in favor, would you please vote? Again, as we tally up the votes again, I thank everybody for joining in um, and spending the time with us. Hopefully we've uh, covered everything to try to minimize uh, the time and everybody's time and respect everybody's time. Hopefully we covered everything that you wanted to see. But if there are questions or anything that you need to ask afterwards, please don't hesitate to shoot uh, Sheila or the staff an email and we can definitely get those answered. You have two people that don't want to join our 2%. <laughs> we like you too. We would love to stay here all day with you, but got work to do. So thank you everyone. And just in closing, just one last uh, shout out to our sponsors. Thanks again for hanging in there with us this year when it's kind of a crazy year and when you can't get your signs on a golf tournament, you know, board or a cocktail hour little tabletop. So uh, we do, do very much appreciate you. So thanks again. And wishing everyone some health and happiness in the coming months. Look forward to seeing you in person. Take care. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.